so uh, this friend of mine transferred to me the pleasure to introduce Am I able? Vijay Laxmi? Trivedi is it? Yes. <laughs> and she'll be talking about Hubert Kunst, Mutsubisky, and Hubert Slope. Please. Thank you. Yeah, so, as usual, I begin uh, my talk by thanking the organizers, but uh, yeah, and, uh, and to give me an opportunity to visit this place. Can you hear me? No. No, we can. What should I do? Can you, can you just pull it up a little bit? Close it to your mouth. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. But then I had to talk like this. Okay. <laughs> so. And giving me an opportunity to the, visit this uh, new country. So this talk, uh, as you see the title and the address, it's uh, meant for general audience. And suddenly I find experts sitting in the audience. And my apology to them, because it's a very elementary talk. So please bear with me. So, so here, I begin with, uh, first of all, that's the standard beginning in the commutative algebra, to begin with a commutative Noetherian ring. So those who don't like it, uh, you can assume that a quotient of a polynomial ring is an example of a commuted uh, Noetherian ring. So these rings, so given, say, you have a polynomial in n variables, go modulo the ideal given by m equations. So these rings are particularly nice. They are called geometric rings. Why? Because you have a geometry associated with them. As I said, my talk is for general audience. I'm being a little sloppy, so please bear with me. Uh, so, so what you do, you have a ring R, so you associate uh, the uh, algebraic object. It is just a set of points in K and space, if it's a polynomial in n variables. So just zero set of those polynomials. So you have a R and you have a geometric space XR, and given a maximal ideal of R will correspond to a closed point of XR. So that's uh, the thing. Now, how do we uh, deal with uh, these kind of problems? So suppose you want to study a property of the ring. So good way of uh, doing it is uh, to attach uh, some invariants, numerical invariants to the ring, and see how those numerical invariants reflect on the property of those particular property. And what is a good property for us? So good property is something. So this is a philosophy. So a property P of a ring is a good property, or of a variety, say XR, my topological space or geometric space, I'm calling it variety, if it is an open property. So what's the meaning of that? So suppose that property P holds at a point x in xr or a local ring r at m, then it should hold in, open, in a Zariski open neighborhood. So these are the properties you'll be interested in. So why we should look at this way? Because once you go to local ring, the things could be easier to deal with. Not always, but yeah. So this is a local global principle we adopt. So generally, we look at a local ring. So coming back to one of the well-studied property of an invariant is a Helbert Samuel function. So let me recall. So what, what is it? You f fix a ring, such a ring, say of equal dimension d. So dimension d is something like the, when the geometric space has a dimension d. Uh, uh, and m, you fix a, a point, so a maximal ideal of the ring. So the way you associate, what you do, given r and m, you associate a function. So it takes value at n to be length of, um, I'm sorry, yeah. So n goes to length of r mod m to the power n. Since I have chosen a maximal ideal, this length is going to be finite. So finite vector space over r mod m, over a field. So it length makes perfect sense. So how does this function vary? So in fact, it's a very well, nice function. It is a polynomial function. So that means for not quite for every n, but for large enough n, this behaves like a polynomial. Since it behaves like a polynomial of degree d, where d is a dimension, I can write in terms of uh, binomial coefficients. So this is your e naught, n plus d minus 1 choose d, so on. So, so what we have, we have r, we have maximal ideal, and now we have this polynomial. And polynomial has a sort of leading coefficient. Uh, not leading quite, but yeah, it's called E naught. So it's called classical multiplicity, I'll say, because I'm going to introduce another multiplicity. 
So E naught R is the classical multiplicity of R at M. So E naught itself reflects a lot on the singularity of your XR. So, so in fact, it's a numerical invariant. So when E naught R M is one, if and only if your uh, XR is smooth at that point M, XM. So, so I'll just uh, see if I, yeah. So this is an example. So I'll just concentrate on the first one here, uh, the node. So you take a polynomial in two variables, x, y, and go modulo this equation, x, y minus x square minus y square. So, so this, uh, this particular x, r corresponding to that ring is this node. And when I look at the, my maximum ideal x, comma, y, which uh, correspond to 0, 0, so here you can see this, this quite doesn't look regular. It doesn't look a smooth, this curve. So, so why? Because the E naught of this, if I calculate at this point of this ring, it is 2. So similarly, I can go on for all these, these and but any other place it is going to be 1. So because other place it is 1. So this is example. Similarly, you can go to surface. OK. So E naught is not just being 1, it implies smoothness. It says if E naught is larger, the worse is the singularity. So that's one technique in uh, desingularization takes place. You keep uh, taking points where E naughts are higher. You keep making sure the way you desingularize to make it come down till it reaches one. So, and that's one thing, numerical characterization. But it's a very well behaved invariant. So it doesn't change after a general hyperplane section. So, which is uh, restriction theorems are very well behaved here. So I can go modulo hyperplane section till I reach a dimension one and I have a curve case. So I can compute it. It remains constant in a family. So I have a family of variety which form a flat family. Then I have to need to compute only one member and I know the answer. And it has a cohomological interpretation which is very useful. Okay. So, so much we have said about uh, Hilbert uh, Samuel multiplicity and Hilbert Samuel function. So, okay. Are there any questions or something? So, okay. So now I, I would, would like to look at a characteristic P invariant. So, which uh, should reflect on the characteristic P features of the ring. So, this is a ring. So, you have a commutative local ring. It should be of characteristic P positive, of course, to make sense. So, here, this is a function, again, from uh, n to n. But what you do, instead of at a point n, you look at the length of r mod Frobenius nth power of m. So what is it? So mp is the ideal, which is generated by you take an element of x belonging to m and raise it to the power xpn. So you just take generators of m and raise, to the, raise them x to the power pn and take the ideal generated by that. Or you can think it as an image of uh, this map. So r to r is a Frobenius map x goes to x to the power pn. So take the image of uh, ideal m here to here and take the ideal generated by that. So this is the definition of Hilbert Kunj function. So look at this. So I have said uh, this is at nth or pn is length of r mod nth Frobenius power of m. And here Hilbert uh, Samuel function is n goes to nth power of m. So you have used the Frobenius here. So, OK. So the question is, uh, so what kind of function this is? Um, so this is uh, the f in 80s, this is an old thing. So it's a uh, Monsky proved that this function, so henceforth what I'll do, I'll write, uh, instead of n, I write q equal to p to the power n, instead of writing p to the power n here. So, the, the HK function at Q behaves like uh, some number here, real positive real number here, into the power Q to the power D, plus some function of order less than or equal to D minus 1. So it's uh, saying that it's, a, it's a not a polynomial function, looks like. No. So we haven't made good progress on this. So since uh, just now I compared HK function and HK uh, Hilbert Samuel function, so there you should be able to say something about their corresponding coefficient. So it's uh, easy to compute this. That EHK, which is HK multiplicity, I'll call it, uh, Hilbert Kunj multiplicity or HK, 
this is bounded above by the usual multiplicity this should be comma here and a lot of type uh, no this is a comma here actually yeah and this is a uh, multiplicity mod d factorial where d is the dimension so at least this much you know about the coefficient and just now i said it's a it's a real positive real number so here i should also perhaps uh, ehk rn is the limit of q tends to infinity length of r mod m to the power q. So you can think it like this also. Okay. Then, so what more? So we should uh, is, is to divide, by divide by and yeah, yeah, q to the power d. Thanks. Yeah. It's a q to the power. Uh, yeah, q to the power d. Where d is the dimension of Yes, thanks. Yeah. So, 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 what do you know about this function? So, again, Monsky answered this question. So, if dimension of R is one, then EHK HK multiplicity is same as your usual multiplicity. That's there. I'm sorry that n should be. There's a lot of typos in this. I really prepared in a hurry. So, this n should be one actually. So, this is usual multiplicity n plus delta n where delta n is the periodic function of n. It's, so it is not a in particular polynomial function. So the question he asked uh, or he asked or uh, so, so is EHK R a rational number? So, so we show you, I'll quickly show you some examples where EHK and HK have been computed by various peoples. So R is polynomial ring, that's the best case, it's easiest one. The next case should be, you take a plane curve, that means three variables, modular one equation. So when F, this is a nodal plane curve, then, or if it's elliptic curve, characteristic not equal to two, then one answer, and by different set of people, and when characteristic K equal to two, then different answer. So we get two different answer for different characteristic. So it is reflecting something on the characteristic here because unlike uh, it's, uh, your uh, usual multiplicity, then diagonal hypersurfaces, and this is mistake, mono monomial ideals and binomial hypersurfaces, monoid toric rings, and more recently trinomial plane curves. So I would uh, like to recall uh, some ex uh, one example uh, with uh, my colleague here. So this. This is, you take a homogeneous coordinate ring of elliptic curve embedded by any line bundle of degree greater than or equal to three. So there we have computed, so this, uh, this case is a line bundle of degree equal to three, this plane curve. So, so this is, uh, this, in, in this example, yeah, so any greater than or equal to three. Then you take a full flag variety embedded by an anti-canonical line bundle, so here, the answer HK function looks very nice. It is uh, some rational number EHK, QD, plus uh, it looks like a polynomial where the coefficients are periodic function of N. So, so here I would, if you see this examples, uh, most of the examples here are uh, hypersurface of particular kind. So there many times people have used uh, things like Grobner basis, combinatorial techniques and all. but what happens here? So, okay, where am I? Okay. So, last example, the thing is, when you take a degree, line bundle of arbitrary high degree, the elliptic curve is given by huge number of equations. Depending on the higher the degree, no more number of equations will turn up. And, and G mod B, which is full flag variety, can be arbitrary high dimension. But still, you manage to get a very neat looking answer. The reason, are, reason, reason because of this, there is nice theory of uh, classification of vector bundles for elliptic curves, which we heavily use. So in this, uh, this also gives you conceptual feeling uh, reason why the answer in characteristic two and characteristic not equal to two are different, because vector bundles behave differently there. And then the result of this anderson harbush So these are independently proved actually, so I'm just putting it together. But F lower star is a trivial bundle. This kind of thing we heavily use. So we totally got into this bundle theory here. Okay, so, 
So seeing these examples, uh, you, it seems like why HK multiplicity or even function or multiplicity is so difficult to compute. So, so some reasons could be, unlike uh, Hilbert uh, multiplicity, it doesn't behave well under hyperplane section and can go up also. And the, in fact, these examples people have computed, it shows that. And it doesn't re respect a, a flat deformation, so it can vary. So, so we have no way of controlling it. So then why is it interesting then, you should say, <laughs> if it's so difficult? So, so the reason can be that EHK is a more subtle invariant than the usual multiplicity. And as it was, uh, uh, it gives more information of characteristic P. Sorry? What, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I made quite a few glaring mistakes here, looks like. Yeah, I was, so, what an Abe Yoshida, this is, uh, I think earlier also you have reminded me, earlier talk, so. So first thing first, so when EHK is one, then your ring is smooth at that point. So it be, okay, so it takes care of that part as a as user multiplicity. Then look at this result. So this I think I haven't uh, said in full generality. So your EHK is suppose bounded by this number in terms of dimension and one, then your ring is F rational. So this is a result of Blickel and NSQ, but uh, when I was looking at the uh, proof, uh, it relies heavily on the result of Goto and Nakamura because they have given characterization of F rationality. So then here F rational, if you remember, is a substitute for rational singularity in characteristic P. Because in characteristic P, we the problem of existence of resolution of singularity is not completely resolved, so you don't know. So this behaves very well whenever there is a rational resolution. Okay. Then this is a conjecture again. This is a glaring mistake here. This should be other way. So every HK multiplicity takes lowest for the regular ring. It's a, it's a one. So the next class of, uh, I mean, the best class of non-regular ring should be a quadratic hypersurface. So if I go run over the non-regular rings, set of non-regular rings, so this is the lower bound for all these rings. That's a conjecture. And not only that, this is FP closure side. So if equality holds, that, that's uh, pretty surprising, then in fact R is isomorphic to AP analytically. That's a, so it's a pretty strong invariant in some ways. So this is a conjecture, it's uh, sol up to seven, I suppose, and something. Uh, and complete intersection rings, it's okay, and maybe so. Okay, so here we go to slightly different direction. Now, we relate EHK with a semi-stability of vector bundles. So my job is slightly easier because Balaji has defined semi-stable bundle, but I'll go through it again, once again. So, so there are three terms, semi-stability, uh, vector bundles, and um, Sizigi. So, so here I'll restrict to a two-dimensional ring, a standard graded two-dimensional ring. So you can take a polynomial algebra, which is of dimension two. You take a fixed uh, a maximal ideal, a relevant maximal ideal. So the advantage of going to a standard graded ring is that you can think it as a, when you look at the XR, so it's just set of lines passing through origin. And you just identify those lines to a point, then that's x equal to proja. So, so this is your example. This is suppose this is your uh, xr, given your r two dimensional, and now these lines you identify to a point. So here it is. So proj of that xr is like this. So dimension drops by one, one when you take the projar, but that's not the good reason for to study projar. The advantage of going to projar that you land up into a compact space, so complete space. So that is easier to deal with, but disadvantage is that uh, though your uh, original thing was affine, that means it was uh, XR spec of a ring, XR, which is a corresponds to a ring, this project is not quite so, but locally it will look like a affine thing. So it is patching, patches of uh, patches of affine things together, fit nicely fit together. So we have this, so, okay. So having done this, now once again we come back to the ring. 
So now you have ring R and given that ring R, you have related, you found a X which is a proj of R. So you look at zeroth local cohomology. So OX is a structure sheaf. So X is locally given by a fine, uh, ring, a fine rings. So structure sheaf, the sheaf of rings. So these are OX and you integrate the line bundle. So you can compute the zeroth cohomology. So I won't define that now. So global sections, what you say. So you take this. So not quite, this equality is not quite so, say, but up to finitely many terms. And it's good enough for our purpose. So you, so you have a R and you express in terms of the graded ring like this. OK. So now, what is HK R at M? So this is length of R mod MQ by definition. Yeah. So this I represented in the graded form. Each graded piece, if I look at, then it, it is length of at M plus Q level. It is RM plus Q mod R1 Q tensor RM. So now this is the way I look at it henceforth. So, so mind you that your RM is, uh, RM actually is your H naught of uh, OXM. So what you do, you look at your R1. This is your R1 or maximal, it will give you the generator of maximal ideal. Tensor with the structure sheaf, look at line bundle. So this is going to be a vector bundle. So if OX is the sheaf of rings, V is a nothing but the sheaf of free modules on the sheaf of rings. So that's the one way of saying vector bundle. So now you have a, I told you, you have a Frobenius on your ring. R. Once you have Fro but Frobenius are very nice functor, it localizes and everything. So it, it does make sense to talk Frobenius from X to X at the ring level, and it patches up. So topological level, you have a Frobenius from X to X. Now, this I'm going a little fast here, I think. So you have a, a bundle here. This sequence of modules is happening in this ring. You pull it up like a tensor. But if you're X, R to R, your Frobenius map, you tensor with the bigger ring. So you take this. So you have taken Fs upper star, S iterator Frobenius. So X goes to X to the power P to the power S. Uh, X goes to X to the power P to the power S, that means. So here you take a Frobenius of the vector bundle, Frobenius of the whole short exact sequence, tensor with the line bundle M because I want to go to Mth graded piece. So I look at that piece. So this is my piece. So, so that this Fs upper star Vm to this H0 OX Frobenius fullback tensor this thing will give a short exact sequence. And this short exact sequence give me a long exact sequence. But we are pretty lucky here because what happens, you H0 and H0 of those middle term will look like this, H1. But hence, for, hence next onwards, the, all the cohomologies are zero because these are nice functors. So we ended up getting four sequences involving cohomologies. So we want to compute the co-kernel of this map. Yeah, that, that was our definition. So this was uh, HKRM at, at great pieces this. So this should be actually image of uh, R1Q tensor Rm in Rm plus Q. Yeah, so I... Yeah, so, so what's the upshot of this? So basically, the computation of EHK, which is uh, nothing but the computation of uh, co-kernel of this map, is reduced to the computation of these cohomologies of vector bundles, whose rank and degree I know. Because if I know degree of V, I know degree of all these things. So rank and degree of the bundle I know. So can I say something about these homologies, H0 and this thing, in terms of rank, all rank and the degree of the vector bundle? So when does this happen? So so now remember that my x is a curve, that I use it very heavily. So this is a, Balaji has defined yesterday, a semi-stable bundle. So if you have a semi-stable bundle means for any sub-bundle, the slope of the bigger one, uh, uh, slope of the sub-bundle is less than or equal to slope of the ambient one, where mu w is degree of that vector bundle mod rank of the vector bundle. So this is your definition of semi-stability. So by this definition, it follows immediately, actually. So if you have a semi-stable bundle of rank R and genus G, 
then its first zeroth local cohomology will vanish if degree of this thing is zero because it cannot have line bundle uh, of degree negative here. So it has no section. So this is zero. The same fact will imply that h1 of this thing is zero if degree of wm is written r into 2g minus 2. So this is just shared duality for the curve which I am using heavily here. So, so that the range, this range has been taken care of. I know the h0 or h1, that's good enough. Now in this limited range, which is uh, consisting of r into 2g minus 2 steps, your, this cohomology is bounded by rg. So this cohomology grows very, very slowly. So since I am, as I said, I have taken EHK as a limit of this. So in this, this doesn't play any role, so I can ignore it. So, so more or less I know the definition of co-kernel, provided my S Frobenius iterated V is semi-stable for all S. So, so we could have carried out the compet this computation if my V and all iterated Frobenius are semi-stable. So one thing also I would like to say, F upper star V is semi-stable implies V is semi-stable. So, but not the other way around. So, so anyway, so, but every bundle is not semi-stable. So what do you do? So this is the, the very important thing, HN filtration. This is used all the time heavily in vector bundles. Is you, nevertheless, you take any vector bundle. So it will have a filtration where sub-quotients are semi-stable. And if I put this condition, the second one, uh, I'm sorry, this one, so here given V, mu i v you define to be the ith slope of the sub quotient. This is f i mod f i minus 1. There's a typo here. So if I, if they happen to be in a dist, uh, strictly decreasing order, then this, this uh, filtration is physically unique. There cannot be any other choice, not up to isomorphism also. They are unique. So given v, that means harden or Simpson says, given v, you have a unique filtration. Okay. So, so this let's uh, we can define now this one given v I can define this number mu i v square r i v where r i is the rank of e i mod e m f i mod f i minus one. Yeah. Is, is f i. Yeah. Here. F i mod F i minus 1. There are a lot of typos in my slide, I said. <laughs> Looks like, yeah, now when I'm reading, I'm discovering them. So remember, this, we have a, we remember the following fact. We have a vector bundle. We have unique HN filtration. And you can associate a number called AHKV. So this has nothing to do with characteristic of the underlying field. So this, this makes sense in any characteristic. OK, but what happens? But Still, my problem is not solved because if I take v, and uh, so I can have H n filtration H sub quotient is semi-stable, so I can compute the cohomologies of those. I suppose there exists some cohomology, I believe. But uh, when I take the next Frobenius uh, pull uh, pullback, so I don't know what that H n filtration of that one got to do with uh, this one. They do not behave nicely, so I'm still at loss. So what should we do? So it's a old result of Lange, not so old result. So what it says doesn't matter. If you take high enough iterated Frobenius pullback, eventually you'll find a filtration which is strongly semi-stable. So this is, uh, that means each strongly semi-stable means for each uh, uh, Frobenius pullback, they remain semi-stable. That's uh, one definition. So you can say in characteristic zero, every semi-stable bundle is strongly semi-stable because every, under every finite map, it is pulls to HN filtration because of Galva extension. So here, however, as I said, if a Frobenius pullback of a bundle is semi-stable, then it implies V semi-stable, just the very definition of uniqueness of HN filtration implies. But not the other way around, and there are examples. So, so the, the, this is very important uh, theorem so for our purpose. So what it, uh, I'll just go back. So again, of course, this bundle is, uh, this uh, filtration is unique and all. So basically, if I take higher edge 
more photoluminescence pull back. So, HN filtration of that say FS plus 1 upper star V will be the prominence pullback of this bundle. So, it is a complete control now for large enough N. And for our HK multiplicity, this large enough iteration is important, that is all. I mean, we can ignore the finitely many. So, that is suitable. So, once you got that filtration, I can define a mu HKV. So, this is, this I, we call HK slope to be, you have a propinate, this, there, this is where S the place where the strong HN filtration takes place. You take mu, uh, i slope of this bundle, so that is mu of E i upon E i minus 1 and this uh, R i is mu rank of E i upon E i minus 1. So, you associated this number and I go modulo 1 upon P s because I had to normalize. Suppose I have made the choice to another s where it happens, then there might be two answers. This normalization makes sure that answer is independent of choice of s for large enough s, correct? So, this is what so, if I go to s plus 1 and multiply 1 upon p s plus 1, then the answer will be the same as this one. So, this is a well defined HK slope. So, in characteristic p, you are able to define HK slope of a vector bundle. Okay. So, so now you have a vector bundle, you have strong H N filtration and you have your theorem of Sayers duality, etc. So, you just combine everything. So, this was a result of Brenner and myself, uh, independently it came out. At the same time, in fact, so it is uh, if you take a standard gated two dimensional ring, so proj r is a curve that means, then I can write your HK multiplicity, I can write as degree of x mod 2, which this number I know, which is x is the proj of r, and mu HKV, which is this number, and embedding dimension of r. So, so upshot of this in particular is my EHK r is a rational number in this case. I can say because all are, so that is uh, one upshot. But uh, so in particular it generalizes the result of Monsky for dimension r equal to 1. So, so but this uh, question we answer only for a standard graded ring. So this is still open to my knowledge to non graded two dimensional ring. So we do not know. Okay. So uh, now we look at this example and as I made, uh, I made my comment that it is uh, very hard to compute EHKR seems like. So, now looking at this example, one should be able to say, I have this formula now, so I can easily compute EHK for standard uh, graded two dimensional ring now. I have this formula, but unfortunately no, the answer you cannot, because what happens? The construction of HN filtration or Frobenius pullbacks is a very difficult problem, in fact. So, you are converting one difficult problem to another one, that is all. So, you have to see what they reflect on each other, that is the game. So, in fact, now EHK gives more information about the Frobenius semi-stability. So, means Frobenius semi-stability means which Frobenius it remains semi-stable and which onwards it does not. So, that is the thing. So, so this was the result. So, it says you take, uh, I'm, uh, my ring is a st still two dimensional standard graded ring. The EHKR is always bounded below by this number, degree known numbers, degree x and 1 plus embedding dimension minus 1. I am putting this result rather crudely because it gets more technical otherwise. And if this term, it achieves a minimal number bound, then the corresponding Suzuki bundle has to be strongly semi-stable. So, this is a bit strange because uh, I, one can understand if V is strongly semi-stable, so lots of cohomology vanishing takes place and your co-kernel is of the maximal uh, image, so you have the least bound, that makes sense. But why if EHKR achieves uh, this lower number, that means uh, some, it will reflect for large enough and some cohomology may vanish or not, then why it should imply that V is semi-stable for all Frobenius? But it does. So, what you do, you have this EHKR, you write as equal to this plus some error term and you prove that error term is expressible in the form of uh, those uh, difference of those slopes mu i minus mu i minus 1 type uh, and they become 0. If they become 0, then uh, of course, V is a strongly semi-stable. I mean, that is uh, you will not have HN filtration that means. So, this was one. So, if you go to plane curves, then in fact, it gives literally a numerical characterization 
of the behavior of Sizigga bundle. So this is the result. So here actually it is this not necessary non-singular any plane curve. So you have a plane curve, so V is actually two dimensional, two rank two vector bundle. You have this short exact sequence. So what are the possibility for V? So V is semi-stable but not strongly semi-stable, that is uh, this property or V is not semi-stable to begin with or V is strongly semi-stable. So there are only three possibilities and three, po so three possibility correspond to three different answers. So, so it gives a bound on this numbers, that is one thing. But here if I look at this place, V is semi-stable, not strongly semi-stable, that means there is some S for which F upper star S minus 1 is semi-stable but uh, FSV is not semi-stable and then it has a harder non-Zimmer filtration for that F upper star S to line 1. So this is like this, this is a harder non-Zimmer filtration. So the third thing if I look at, so it says this S denotes, when you get the EHK, the S denotes the place from which your bundle sees to be semi-stable and the L denotes the difference in the slope of uh, the line bundle and that rank 2 vector bundle, okay. So I earlier made some noise about uh, open property. So if you look at the ring uh, Z to be say some Z some polynomial Xn modulo some equation. So this Rz has a vibration over a spec Z. So if I take, so elements of these are what? 0, union, prime numbers. So this is a topological uh, space spec Z, prime ideal, prime numbers. So So if I take an image of fiber over any element, so it corresponds to the ring over Z mod PZ. So fiber over any such P, it will correspond to a characteristic P, characteristic P ring and fiber over 0 corresponding to characteristic 0 ring. So if uh, in this case, suppose if I, for example, so we, uh, okay, that is one thing. Then you have, of course, your XZ similarly, proj of each fiber, and uh, then you also have vector bundle, VZ. So, so then for each fiber you have EP, and each fiber you have XP. So, when you say, say for example, you take a semi-stable property of a vector bundle. So, this is a generic point, and all the P tends to this generic point because characteristic zero you can think as a point at infinity. So an open set of uh, around this point is nothing but, so if I take open set in this, uh, this is open set, open neighborhood, I'm sorry, the is nothing but some P, P all greater than or equal to some fixed P naught. So this tend to be the open set around this point. So open property says, suppose your bundle V is, is semi-stable at the fiber zero, then it is semi-stable for P large enough onwards for all large P enough it should be semi-stable. Now the same thing I should be asking if I have my bundle is semi-stable so as I said in characteristic zero every semi-stable bundle is strongly semi-stable that is for any finite map. So is it tr true that uh, for F upper star VP is semi-stable for all P large enough in this family? So these kind of questions uh, we ask now. So, Excuse me. Huh. Uh, the L's in number two yeah. can occur all with this restriction? Can occur all. I think there is an example of Monsky and for D odd, I think. He said all these bounds are achieved. Uh, and the L in number three it has a mini? Yeah, it has a mini actually. Uh, uh, oh, where is my, I didn't show the second slide. So the L was, a, so the, I said uh, L, so you, these are rank 2 vector bundles. So suppose F S upper star V is not semi-stable. 
So it has a destabilizing sheaf. So it has to be of rank one, so it's a line bundle. So it shows what is the degree of this line bundle that L will show. So, okay. So as I said, the concept of openness, I just defined a vague term. So, so let's come to the example of Monsky. Hahn and Monsky have computed, this is the old example of theirs. So it's a degree four sur hypersurface. So this example, they have computed all HK multiplicity. Now we apply this to our characterization of uh, stable bundle. So what it says, that Sizigi bundle of RP, VP, is strongly semi-stable if P is congruent to plus or minus 1, 8, or VP is semi-stable, but F upper star VP is not semi-stable. So here, uh, VP is strongly semi-stable, this, that means for all Frobenius pullback, this bundle is semi-stable. But here it says for P, this kind of piece, at the first stage it fails to be semi-stable. So Frobenius pullback is not an open property. So we can say, because, so semi-stability of Frobenius doesn't behave well under reduction mod P. Okay, so what do we do then? So we attempt another one. So, so now, have I missed some slide? Okay, this. Okay. Yeah. So this I'm putting it. Whatever I said there, I put it in a more proper way. So you take a family of smooth projective curves define over uh, finally generated Z algebra. Basically, I'm taking a spread or thing, and this is a very ample sheaf. So given each point of this, you have a vector vector bundle over your projective curve axis. So you have Suzuki bundle and everything. So mu HK makes sense. So if S0 is a generic point of spec A, then as S tends to S0, where P tends to infinity, there it corresponds to, is limit of this is mu HK of Vs0, which is same as A HK of Vs0 in characteristic zero. So as S tends to infinity, it, it tends to a limit, what I'm saying. So I plug this thing to this uh, HK multiplicity business because it's given in terms of all mu HK and all. So it says EHK of X is where S tends to S naught tends to a limit, which is like a characteristic zero bundles here, all this thing. Okay. So here the thing, uh, what Monsky's example is showing that as P tends to infinity, this uh, EHK actually is neither monotonic increasing or decreasing, it oscillates the bundle. But nevertheless, it oscillates, but it comes to a point finally, it's a limit. So, so that's what it says. That's the best looks like one can achieve here. Okay, so I'm just talking again in coming back to ring theoretic language. So this tells me is that I have a notion of HK multiplicity in characteristic zero. I can define at for this special case, not always, I don't know. So if you have standard graded ring R over a field of characteristic zero, you take a grade maximal ideal or you take any primary ideal and you take a finitely generated Z algebra. So then the pair Ri and any choice of spread Ra, Ra, Ia, we can, so what happens, we take a fiber over A, so that will correspond to characteristic P's rings. So those, these characteristic P rings, as P tends to infinity, this has a limit. And that to define as EHKRI. So that makes uh, perfect sense because uh, in characteristic zero, the vector bundle will behave exactly at limit of this, will come out. So this is, this makes sense. So in fact, that's, that's uh, the thing here. Okay. So uh, I go back to one more slide. So this now I can't say anything in higher, higher dimension, higher dimension of projective varieties, because I, I, we are not able to relate EHK with uh, behavior of Sizigi bundle. But nevertheless, for any vector bundle, these these terms do make sense, mu HKV and uh, AHKV, all this thing, and semi stability is defined for any dimension. So. So the question is, what can you say about uh, then this theorem, where mu hk, does it have a thing? So that's what it is now, yeah. 
How much time I have? One minute. Oh, so, so okay. So I'll go. Uh, I think. Uh, okay. So, so, so in higher dimension also you can say the thing. But uh, there we have used uh, theorem, uh, well av available theorems. Now we have to do some work here, more work. We prove the th same theorem for higher dimension and get the result. So whatever it means. So, so basically, mu mu h k is equal to a h k p. Mu a h k p. If I look at p as p tends to this is a, is a constant term. So, but this is a kind of oscillating term. So this equal to this. If and only if h n filtration is strong h n filtration. Okay, but uh, so it's not behaving well otherwise. But generally, but still it has a limit. That's the point one wanted to say. So. Uh, yeah. So, what about EHK in higher dimension? So, the thing is, this is a conjecture of Monsky. So, you take a threefold. So, he says uh, this is conjecture, mind you. So, EHK is uh, uh, irrational number there, and the next he thinks that it is transcendental. So, so I'm done actually. Thank you.